my dudes. What's up? Um, uh, this looks pretty simple, right? Uh, what direction does friction point? Well, that's a lot like asking, what if there weren't friction? Well, if there weren't friction, this object, as you know, would accelerate that way. Well, that allows us to say, why doesn't it accelerate that way? Because of a frictional force that opposes that acceleration. All right, now, that's not always the case. Um, you know, for a car going around a curve, friction is what causes the acceleration. But in the context of, uh, in the context of what we're about to get into, we can use this idea you know, well, what if there weren't friction? Because friction can oppose acceleration. Okay? So we're going to use this idea to talk about what direction does friction point for one of these rolling spool sorts of situations. Just because I think it's pretty cool. Um, Intuitively, sometimes we can say, well, it's got to point this way, but sometimes it can get a little harder. I'll show you where, um, I'll show you how to determine which way friction points, all right? Um, so same thing here. Why are we asking this? Well, because friction can oppose acceleration. Uh, so, well, here's an object, okay? And let's say that there is a force applied like that. This is a spool sort of thing with an outer outer radius R, capital R, and an inner radius little r. And we want this to roll without slipping. That's important. This is going to roll without slipping. Rolling without slipping. Okay, so the way you can do this is you can look at the two criteria we can apply to this um, to this to this object, and the two criteria are we can look at net force, and we can look at um, uh, net torque. All right, I just want to get rid of this. All right, if we look at net torque, and again, let's assume that there's no friction. Well, what would a net torque sort of statement yield? Well, in this case, we would say that uh, the, the net torque um, is I alpha, uh, net torque I alpha. And that's, in this case, FR equals I alpha, well, alpha. Um, alpha, remember, for a rolling without slipping, we can say that there's a, a tangential. And alpha is AT over R. AT is R alpha. That's, that's our rolling without slipping criteria. All right, now, I, oof, what's that going to be? I don't know. But what we get is, um, you know, we can say that there's some AT equal to R, F, R over I. All right. Um, you know, we could express this I. Well, that depends on what this shape is. All right. Is it a cylinder? Is it a, um, is it a spherical shell? It can't be a hoop because we can't apply a force to a place on a hoop other than on the outside of the hoop. Uh, is it a spherical shell? Is it a solid sphere? Those are the those are the big ones, right? We got cylinder, we got a shell, basketball, we got a um, solid sphere, bowling ball. Um, what else? That's it, right? I mean, I guess we could be uh, an actual spool slash hollow. No, not hollow. Yeah, spool. That's different though. That's pretty complex. The spool is a complex shape that has a cylinder in the middle and then two uh, discs on the outside, right? So that's a whole different ball of wax. Well, let's just take, we'll look at each of these cases. 
All right. Now, I'll sort of leave that. Now, this tangential acceleration, you have a couple of choices, but I'm going to choose an axis of rotation there. All right. And if we apply this force where it's being applied, well, that about this axis would make this object rotate that way. And thus, there's an implied or uh, uh, a tangential acceleration at that point that would look like that at the bottom, where the friction acts, all right? So that's what we get from the rotation side. If we look at net force, then we say, well, uh, we say net force is MA, and we get, well, that just F equals M. A. Now here, A, I say ACM. All right. And, well, we get that ACM is F over M. And what we get is a force this way makes the every part of this object or tend to accelerate that way. including that place on the bottom. And so the question is, how do these two intended accelerations or purported accelerations compare? Uh, so, um, and the deal is, well, let's say if ACM is greater than AT, well, that means that the system, this object, would tend to accelerate, I'll say, a net would be to the right. And therefore, friction would be to the left. That's sort of scenario one. Well, if AT would be uh, greater than ACM, now that says that a net would, if not for friction, be to the left. And we mean of that place. But you know that that place does not accelerate relative to the floor without slipping. And so that means that friction force would point to the right. To the right. The friction force points to the right. Now, this is a nice simple expression. This one's uglier, but remember, um, there's a couple of terms of R that lie within any any um, moment of inertia state. It's going to be something, something, MR squared. All right, so we're going to have a way to get to address the presence of that R sort of R squared term up there with an R squared term down there. And then look, we're left with an M. We've got an F up there. Well, look, that's a lot more like this F over M. But remember, there's some sort of fractional thing up in front of there. And then R has some, is going to be some fraction of big R. So, so then we start to be able to compare pretty, uh, pretty, um, without too much, uh, pretty straightforwardly. We're able to compare those two accelerations, like in the following situation. Let me co co copy this, and so let's go here, paste. What happened? Back here, copy, copy here, paste. All right, so let's say that this is, oh, I don't know, say a disk slash cylinder. And let's say that we apply a force here, and this is object of radius r, and we'll call this um, r over 2. How about that? And let's see what happens. All right, let's use these our tool to predict what is going to happen or what direction friction must point. We take that as our axis of rotation and a net 
Latour says that f r over 2 is pi alpha. <clears throat> well, i of a disk, let's see, f r over 2 is 1 half m r squared alpha a p over r. Well, check this out. Up, 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 up. Then we get F equals M A T. And we say that A T is F over M. Okay, so we have an A T that's of this magnitude. Well, that should look familiar because when we do net force, we get just plain old F equals MA, and A is, well, this is ACM, ACM, F over M, and we get an acceleration like that of the same size, and it means that, well, this bottom place has no net acceleration, and that's actually good because that's what happens in rolling without slipping, but apparently without any friction at all. So here, there, there's no friction required, which is pretty weird because we think about friction as being necessary for things to roll, but, I mean, because we are applying a torque, that's enough to make this object rotate, and the conditions are just right based on the, based on the physical characteristics of the object and the place that we've decided to apply the force such that we actually don't need friction in this case. So that's kind of weird. So what if we, instead of applying that force at R over 2, apply that force to a different place? Um, so I've got to do this. Undergroup. Can I make this bigger? I don't need that. Let's say that we're going to... Let's say we're going to apply our force F at a place up here. And here's R. And we'll say that this is two-thirds of R. Now let's say it's still a disk. Right, we go net force, sorry, net torque. So that says that F two R over three is I alpha. So that's two thirds F R is one half M R squared A T over R. Okay, okay, we get AT is 4 thirds F over M. Agree? Multiply both sides by 2, divide by 2. Yep. Okay, so that means there's an AT, well, sorry. I need. We have an AT that's. Kind of a mess now. There's our AT. All right, and why is AT that way? Just so we're sure, right? If this is our axis of rotation, a force applied here makes the object rotate or tend to rotate in that direction, thus. This place at the bottom, yeah, has a tangential acceleration to the left, right? Our net force says that, well, I'll just boil it right down to that. Hopefully you can buy that. And, well, that's CM. So ACM is like that, and AT is 
four thirds AT is four thirds ACF. So this point, this location, if not for friction, would tend, I mean, really, if we say the net acceleration without friction would be one third ACM to the left. Well, that doesn't happen. That, that point does not accelerate relative to the ground, which says that friction force must point to the right. What do you say about that? Okay. Because I couldn't help it. I couldn't help myself. I wrote a little, I wrote a little spreadsheet model where... Look, I've listed these and I made, you can choose whatever shape you want and then you can apply uh, a point, you can apply a force that say, look, see how it says R divided by three halves, that's two thirds R. So if we do cylinder, ah, good, right? There's our, there's our, it works out right. All right, I can change if you apply above or below. Um, um, yeah, uh, you can change whatever you want. So that's a fun little exercise. Go ahead. Why don't you make one if you want? Call that a wall challenge, perhaps. But here's what I want you to do. Um, what I want you to do is is investigate the following four scenarios, and these are all going to be um, with forces applied above center of mass is applied above center of mass. So case one, I want you to do a cylinder. So we'll do shape. We'll do, we'll do R. Oh yeah, that's it. That's all we gotta do. R. We'll do it at R over three. Case two, do a shell. That's a basketball. At R over 2. Case 3. Steer at R over 2. Case 4. Uh, okay, hang on. Spear and do it at R over 4. Now, these I mean solid. I'll be with you in a second. If you need to pass on. No, this is the last. Wait, in a second. Um, so that's it, okay? Tell me what direction friction points and justify with your work. Thank you.